Good day viewers, welcome to the Women's Health Channel. My name is Gabriel Iberase. Today we are going to be looking at um, a germane topic called female trafficking. We know that there is human trafficking uh, because this is a Women's Health Channel. We'll be talking today on female trafficking. With me are two experts in the house. Um, my immediate right is Dr. Egagifo Ovoke. She's a specialist obstetrician and gynecologist, a fellow of the West African College of Surgeons Faculty of OBGYN. To my immediate left is Dr. Ifeoma Oreahe. She's a public health expert and a fellow of the West African College of Public Health Physicians. Um, interestingly, I brought these female experts to talk on uh, these aspects of women's health. And um, they will be looking at um, female trafficking. Dr. Gagifo will concentrate on the um, health aspects with respect to gynecological complications, uh, while Dr. Ifema Oriai will be looking at the public health perspective of it. Uh, we all know that um, female trafficking is rife in Nigeria and has been with us for some time. We'll be looking at how we got it all wrong in Nigeria. In the early 70s, there was nothing like female trafficking. But from the 80s, 90s and up till now, with declining economic, socioeconomic condition, with widespread poverty, with uh, moral degradation in our system, a lot of families, a lot of young girls, a lot of women are being forced into European countries as sex slaves. So um, our discussants will throw more lights on this issue and um, they would help us to sort out this um, uh, this disturbing, alarming condition in Nigeria, let me put it that way. Um, I will start with Dr. Ifema Oriahe. Um, how did this come about? Okay, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, it's very ironic and uh, let's say important, significant too that we are discussing such a topic at this time, being that January is, has been um, allocated as the month for human trafficking prevention awareness. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, January is. <laughs> and um, the day is actually on the 11th of January. So I think it's a very good, um, it's a wonderful coincidence. Um, first of all, we all know that um, everyone has been listening to the news. Um, different issues of human trafficking and modern day slavery activities happening globally and then in Nigeria. Um, when we look at the public health implications, it's a great burden when you think about it because in the first place, you, the things that, the major things that are seen or seeming to cause this include poverty, unemployment, and most importantly, cheap labor. Everybody feels that if um, I get, I can get, a, even if it's a little job in the West, it will pay me so much more. Um, when we look at, apart from that, it affects the individual, it affects the family. First of all, stigmatization. Let's look at it from that way. Um, stigmatization in the sense that everybody feels that um, we are living in a society where everybody wants to be big. Let me put that word, big. If you are seemingly from a poor background, people don't have that confidence anymore and feel that once their person goes to the, once their child goes to the West, it has a way of bringing them or breaking them out of the poverty circle. But where did we miss it? Because when I was growing up, so long as your family name has integrity, yes. you know, people would have great respect for you. But where did we get it from? Where did we miss it? It's a... Values have changed. Yes, values have changed. Values have changed. Okay. Um, Nigerians have grown to love 
pardon my French or my English, have grown to love money? Probably yes, because a large percentage of our people are poor. And everybody just feels that the economic crisis of the country has so restricted people from gaining what, for instance, if it went some other countries, even a farmer can be wealthy. But here you have to struggle and struggle and feel that. So they feel that even if it is to uproot in the West, the person will have money. So when we talk about the family values, it's quite unfortunate. But nowadays you see that every family is in a bid for competition. Every, this one feels that because my child is abroad, they are doing so well. My young child should go abroad. Also. I think that's very significant okay. with the, the, okay. the, the, children, okay. the ch children these days always want to be relevant to their parents. I think there's that de secret desire in most ch children mm -hmm. to say, oh, I sent this money to my parents. My parents have built a house through me. Mm -hmm. You know, parents push their children unknowingly, sometimes into this because they expect that during the festivities like Easter, like Christmas, like New Year, children should bring, they should bring in a good chunk of the income made over the year. So I think in a way, indirectly, right, the parents to also have a role to play because of the expectations yeah. that they have concerning their children. Okay, maybe. Sorry, it has gotten so complex now. Okay. Even then, um, neighbors sell other people's children now. Kidnappers can sell their victim now for trafficking. It has become so complex. Even in intimate partners. Um, there was this case of a cohabiting um, couple. couple. Yes. The male, the guy sold the girlfriend. And the girl didn't know. She didn't know. He gave it the impression because nowadays there are so many fecard ways of painting yeah. it yes. through um, advertisements for jobs. They make it look like advertisements for jobs abroad. Okay. They make it looks like they look like an um, education, you know. So most people just think. Some people even put it as modeling ads. So people just think that they are going for something genuine, but the person that is involved has an um, has an. It's a criminal act. Yes. I think it's safe to say values have changed. Yes. Because these days, it, it, it doesn't seem as if it's so important to get a degree. Because, uh, forgive me, but we, we know that being top there doesn't mean that your, 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 intel your intelligence mm -hmm. is as good. Mm -hmm. People get jobs through connection mm -hmm. and through other means, through bribes. So it doesn't look as if the values that were once held high, like education, focus, diligence, are now as useful in present day life compared to how it was in the 80s, in the 70s, mm -hmm. in the 60s. So values have changed. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how these values have changed. Because if I have a parent who doesn't think it is wrong to help me to pass my mathematics in my final exams in secondary school, then if there's a problem, because that is the person who should teach me that it is necessary to read hard to get that degree. So if she's the one aiding me, right, by paying somebody to write the exam for me, then we have a big problem. Yeah. Parents have a role to play in instilling these values you can, into you the can, younger generation. You know the latest, I don't know if you heard of it, the latest one of um, a teacher who tried to correct a student in the East a young girl, maybe primary school, because the teacher, at least that was what the way we grew up, you yes. make a mistake, the teacher corrects you, yes. punishes you, and then she went home and reported. And then the mom and the uncle came back in retaliation for the, to the teacher. Well, and, they be, and they beat up the teacher? Yes, the teacher, I think she died. Oh, yes, that's, she that's, uh, that's common. So you see that everything has changed. Nobody, the values, the, values, the morals. Okay, for instance, why would you want a 16-year-old girl to be bringing money to the house? 
And she's seeing you, she's a minor. It's a minor. Oh, she gave me get money. And that's yes. tired she, of it. She, she, she can't teach. Yes. She can't she, she can't run a company. Yes. She's not a doctor. She's not she doesn't have a job. So where else will she get that money? So so let's look at the concept of uh, female trafficking. Uh, okay. Doctor Ray. Yes. Just educate us about the concept of female trafficking. Okay. Um let me start broadly. Yes. Human trafficking is the, the purpose of trading people for the purpose of work. It could be sex, it could be labor, but being that we are concentrating on females, you see that females constitute about 80%, um, especially when it comes to sex, sex, trade, and so on and so forth. And 50% of that population are minors. So you see that the public health implications are so vast. Human trafficking means that people are being lured involuntary, come, there is better life somewhere else. People are being cajoled. And then, because of the factors or the reasons I have listed before, poverty, unemployment, cheap labor, people are easy to buy. And we must not forget that it comes with its own um, consequences. For one, there is um, psychological abuse, mental abuse, physical abuse. Physical abuse, even the hazards of the travel. You see? We've had some people die on the way. Yeah. Those who go through the desert paths, they, they died here. Yes. We've heard of people who drink their own urine and not the rest because of uh, severe dehydration. Yeah. Some die of heat stroke, mm -hmm. lots of complications. Some even drown yeah. in, in the sea. Part. You know. So, so how, how do we get our people, especially our youngest and women, who are being coerced, cajoled, as you said, who are being told lies that there is luxury <laughs> and they'll get to the Idorado when they travel? How do we prevent, how do we stop them from, I mean, uh, uh, going to this, as um, others uh, uh, journeys? And okay, so when we're going, let's say, down to the basics, prevention is better than care. So, how do we prevent it? The first thing is that there has to be some laws. That's what they want we call primordial prevention. There we have, we have laws in Nigeria now. Yeah, yeah, we I'm sure there are have laws. laws in, to we have make laws it. in Nigeria. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. Then we have um, health promotion and health education. This is one media that I feel that is a good channel. But not just stopping here, we have to look for ways to reach people in the grassroots. Um, maybe by um, town criers, flyers, something to come down to their level. You have to, even if you have to write it in Pidgin English. Okay. Yes. Meaning that we have to also um, improve um, our cultural values, moral values, spiritual values. And then um, our pastors, priests, <laughs> and imams. That, that, that is an aspect. It's a involved. very thin line mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Yeah. When you are beginning to talk about spirituality, it becomes a debate. Uh, because so, I even heard that um, before they go to countries like Italy, that um, they go to uh, pastors for prayers. And they go to a, a religion, religious um, <laughs> um, uh, native doctors yes, for charms and all the rest, fortification. <laughs> so, how do we tell them that it is not easy abroad? You don't get dollar on the streets of America easily. How do we stop them? Because a lot of them are dying, and a lot of them are suffering from a lot of complications. Well, apart from educating them, and then. I feel like, for instance, now we're in a global village, right? We have so many videos now as proof. But because yeah. I heard yesterday from someone that she's even that um, her friend is planning to still go through Libya. Oh, haven't you been hearing what is happening? The person said there are like movies or that the stories are things to scare people from oh, going. Yeah, so it's like they still don't believe what people are saying. Okay. Okay. Recently, the deportees are everywhere, and uh, the, we heard the federal government is trying to rehabilitate them. I mean, most of them are in Port Harcourt. So, I mean, they are living witnesses to 
all the hazardous experience they got there. So I don't think they should be interested in that again. But there's one thing that readily comes to mind, and um, I want Dr. Gaiko to talk about this. The socioeconomic uh, uh, climate in the country. If you look at developed countries, why is it that it's the poor countries that are involved in self excess um, uh, trade, mm -hmm. human trafficking, the very poor one. It's not that you don't have it in the local countries, but when you look at statistics, it is so much in the poor countries. Nigeria is amongst the leading countries in human trafficking. You know, you have Equatorial Guinea, Ghana here, you know, they have a better socioeconomic status as far as I, I, I know, and they are actually stemming uh, female trafficking. Right? I don't think we are doing much because Nigerians are living every day out of this country in droves. in droves. So I think, I want to make a comment on this. If you look at European, some European countries in North America, you don't hear of people, you don't hear of trafficking just as we hear in Nigeria. I, I believe that um, if our socioeconomic status is good, if you have jobs, mm -hmm. if there is money, there is food, if there is security, I, I think people sincerely would not be involved. What is your take on this? Yes, I. Uh, it's such a complicated issue, and there is no one way to approach it. It's multi faced, it's multi faceted. So, what I think is that a lot of people want shortcuts. Yeah. It is that desire to get rich quick. That is the issue. It is an attitudinal thing. And if 80% of the country believe, the, believe that, oh, if I do this quickly, I'll get rich quickly and I'll get to the rich land quickly. The truth is that a lot of people will continue to go down that path. It's not just poverty. It is also attitudinal. I understand the fact that people want to get rich quickly. But you will agree with me rightly that poverty is also a contributory factor. You know, I'm a doctor, I have a job, but assuming, I mean, I wasn't employed, I'll be wondering, what would I do? There are so many graduates now that are jobless, so many, they go to the universities, they graduate, there's nothing for them. There is really, really no future for them. What do we do to stop this, to prevent this? You know, the population of the world has grown over the decades. Yeah. And if you say poverty is the reason for why people do what they do now. It's amongst I, the reasons. Yes, it's one of the reasons. Yes. I think there has always been poverty. Yes. Yeah. There has always been poverty. And we are not the only poor Yes, I'm another. Well, I don't think we're the poorest. No, we're Nigeria not. is actually regarded as, as one of the rich middle, poor countries. Middle income. Yes. So I still want to do, I still want to hold on to that ideology that this is more of an attitudinal thing. The old values have taken backstage. Education is no longer touted. Um, hard work, diligence, these are not things that are praised anymore. We don't praise honesty. If a man comes back home and tells his wife that he had this deal that was offered to him, but he didn't do it because he doesn't think it's honest, I tell you, 90% of wives are not going to cook for their husbands <laughs> that evening. So I still think it is attitudinal. Yeah. I think that is the real issue because there will always be the rich and the poor. And the poor has always been there, right? And even when there was poverty then, right, there, were, there was better education. Yeah. Okay. There was better um, um, people were more focused, people were more diligent. Yeah, there was better to... family family values. Yes, and the families were still intact. We mm -hmm. were more of, more of them than not intact. These days we have broken homes, so automatically there is a problem, right? Families are disrupted, communities are disrupted. Mm -hmm. I I heard a story and the thing surprised me. Um, I'm not going to name the community because. The aim of this talk is not to point fingers. But there was this community that a big industry came to, and then the industry offered the community 247 lights in Warri here, 247 lights. Um, they said, no, they don't want that, just give us the money. Right? So they would rather have the money than the lights. Than have the lights. Than the they would rather use the money. So that's an attitudinal thing. Exactly. It's not poverty. Whereas there are so many things we can do with electricity. You can use electricity create, to make use, money. You can use it to create jobs. Imagine having a, a, an industry in a community that is always lights. 
I think so you don't have to buy diesel all the time. You yeah. don't have to. So it's like she said, it's just the mentality. I, I, I think it's a attitude now. I, I really yeah. think that. Okay, so where 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 did we get it wrong? And when did we get it wrong? <laughs> we, why did we lose the original gold, the moral values that was bequeathed to us by our forefathers? I think we became too busy. We became too busy, became to, too busy. to raise up our yeah. children, right? We are okay. working 8 okay. to 5. Before some people in Lagos get home, it's past 2. I'm, I'm also guilty of this. <laughs> very busy. Okay, is, is, yes. is that why we have corrupt leaders at all levels because if you are a leader and you are in control of um, uh, of state funds, national funds, local government funds and this is not evenly distributed, yeah. right? I mean, those people who do not get from, I mean, the national cake would be forced to do some other things. You, so you still don't agree with me that corruption is part of this um, mm -hmm. unequal distribution of resources yeah. amongst the Populist is part of this. I agree. Yes. But just that I'm tired of blaming corruption. Yes. We've been blaming corruption for everything now. It's like corruption is now a human being. Any small thing where it's corruption, corruption. Okay, fine. What's this way forward? Let's use China as a case study. China, they are more than us. So we can't say it's our population. You see, they have this um, form of um, structure now. Corrupt leaders are being they are killed. They are executed. <laughs> in fact, they are killed. If you, you are, if you are found corrupt in China, you are uh, I learned, uh, I've forgotten which of their officials, that had a school built. Corruption charges came up from there. Where did you get the money to okay, get a school? To build the school? Do you understand? So in Nigeria, nobody would ask questions. Yes. All they want is that you have money and you are rich. Well, even if you never worked for one day, provided it, you've got the money. It's a circle. It's a circle. It's yes. a circle. Poverty, um, attitudinal problems, corruption. It's just, it just keeps going. Because even the people that would have acted as the force, just a little money and it's all over. In the next, uh, please, I would like to add something. Yes, we are. We have a crisis on our hand. Now, I know that I'm not financially equipped to take care of four children, okay? And I work. Now, a man who doesn't have a job, his wife probably maybe is a petty trader. Mm -hmm. If you if you calculate all that is on her tray, it comes up to about maybe two thousand, and maybe she will sell about five hundred that day or so she will have six children so the problem is multifaceted there are many faces to eat these are the problems wrong decision making when you know that you do not have the capacity financially emotionally psychologically to actually bring up citizens that will be useful to themselves as well as to the country why make the journey at all? So are you saying say we should revisit uh, the for, family planning policy? Definitely. I think it's more of an individual thing. Okay. Right? Because everybody has the rights, human yes. rights, yes. right? Yeah. You have the right to have the number of children yeah. that you okay. want to let, have. Let, okay. let Dr. Egaifo quickly tell our viewers the health consequences of female trafficking. She's a specialist obstetrician and gynecologist. Yes. Um, the problems of female trafficking are not just the infringement on the sexual and reproductive health rights of the woman. There is also the big issue of sexually transmitted infections mm -hmm. that range from pelvic inflammatory disease, that range from infections with Neisseria gonorrhea and other um, organisms, and even gets up to the stage of cancerous illnesses. So, um, female trafficking exposes girls and women to this, okay? When there is a setting of sexually transmitted infections or pelvic inflammatory diseases, such women will have problems in the future with their reproductive health. It becomes an issue because sometimes these infections are actually asymptomatic and they destroy the tubes, okay, and then the time when the woman is ready to settle down and start a family, she wonders, it becomes an issue. Proper fertility management is not cheap. Mm -hmm. There are investigations that have to be done in order to identify the organ that is actually involved. Okay? So you as 
in, in effect, setting yourself up for problems in the future. Mm -hmm. Now, sexually transmitted infections and pelvic inflammatory diseases are just one small ball game. At least, life will still continue. Yeah, no, what HIV about, Exactly. No, we hepatitis B HIV, and hepatitis C. Hepatitis B and C. It's almost, well, for the poor, it's like a death sentence for the poor. Right? Now, what about the cancers? Cervical cancer is sexually transmitted. It is not spiritual, like a lot of our women think. It really is not spiritual. It is sexually transmitted. It, nuns don't have it. Because they will definitely be exposed to multiple yes, sex partners. Yes, nuns. It's been found out that Reverend Sisters do not have cervical cancer. Check the literature. So, the people who, have sexual, who are prone to having cervical cancer are those who are actually exposed sexually, and not just exposed sexually, at a young age, when the girl's body is not is not strong enough to fight off the infected organism, which is human papilloma viruses. So <laughs> the problem is wide, like I said. It is wide and it will really be good for every individual to have a rethink. Right? To have a rethink. Because you may have the money today, but by the time my neighbor has the disease, my other neighbor have, has the disease. You must interact with people. You're not going to live in a bubble. I know I am at risk. That's why this message is so, so important. Every girl and every woman counts. No girl should have to go through this. All right? It is an infringement on her rights to life. It is an infringement on her rights to have the number of children she wishes. Very dehumanizing. It is dehumanizing Very and dehumanizing. demoralizing. Yeah. Because I don't see how these individuals will go on to have normal homes. Post-traumatic stress disorder will yeah. definitely set in. Yeah. And trust. when she, such a woman will even be afraid to have children yeah. because she will know what she has been through in life. Mm. I really hope that this discussion will touch the hearts of as many people that watch it so that they understand that it's not just about the money. There are things that are worse than poverty, yeah. right? There are things that are worse than poverty. And decisions that you make today will matter in 10 years' time. Mm -hmm. For example, cervical cancer. A young girl, right, who has sex, right, in about, if she gets infected with the virus, in about 10 to 20 years, she develops cervical cancer. And she wonders, imagine a girl who is 10 years old, in 20 years will be 30 years old. At the prime of her life, when she is just beginning to make economic contribution to the home, her life is cut off because we all know that in Nigeria, people don't present early. Yeah. Pap smear, which is very important to screen for cervical okay, cancer. We're going to, people this, don't really that means we're going to talk about cervical cancer very soon. Yes, I'm going to bring you in important. again to it's dwell on cervical cancer, genital, <laughs> genital tract yes. malignancy. If I may add, yeah. uh, because um, I'm a school health specialist. Okay. So apart from dissemination of information to the community, okay. I think it's good it could be incorporated into the educational curriculum. Yeah. At least in school, I think, those in schools. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I think a lot of national values yeah, have been, be, removed they've been removed from the core curriculum. values, core values, yeah. religious yeah. values, they've been removed, yeah. moral values, they've been removed. You know, those days, you know, when we're small, social study books, you will see, greet your elder, yeah. yes, and then they will draw the picture. Yeah, and a lot of it, they, they have they a young have, child, they look at you eyeball to eyeball, yes, mm -hmm. and you will say, You haven't greeted, <laughs> you know, they, 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 they greet. actually have to be reinstated, yes, you know. I spiritual think, values yeah. you know foundational principles are so important you see if if the foundation is faulty what can the righteous so do can, very very important you can continue so we can use that as another way of prevention okay so apart from family school so we are reaching children out of school we are reaching children in school yeah. um once in a while maybe churches can have such forums you know okay. that Allow me to interrupt. Yeah, even market. <laughs> Based on this, we find ourselves discussing cervical cancer okay. this time, okay. right? Well, I, let me let me jump the gun. Although the moderator has said this is a discussion for another day. Now, it's I'm not. I'm have a session with you. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so the um, the issue with values removed from the school's curriculum is very important. 
Um, I know. Um, I have. Ha, I'm going If a woman has a nine-year-old daughter and is advised to give the vaccine that will prevent cervical cancer okay. in the future, okay. I'm very sure that some of my sisters out there will have a problem with that. They will say, no, I'm going to instill the value of no any sex or whatever mm -hmm. in my child. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And so at this time, knowledge is very, very important. I guess we'll have to talk about this another day. Okay. Um, um, because it's an important issue. Okay, okay. so so are we wrapping up? Um, out, you've mentioned post-traumatic stress disorders. Yes. Uh, there are some other psychological challenges, oh, emotional challenges, physical abuse. physical abuse, fears, you know, a lot of... Uh, and Then they combine it with alcohol. Yes, drugs. alcohol, they go into drugs, you know, smoking. So it's a whole yeah, it's, it's, it's a messy situation and it's something that you wouldn't wish your... your I, I normally like placing myself in people's position. You wouldn't wish your sisters, your, your, your close relatives, friends, and your people. And I want to let us know as Nigerians that we should be our brothers keepers. You know, these people also have sponsors. People who love them into all this. You know, they should desist from that. You know, you have men and women who are into all this trade. You know, they, some of them have daughters. Would they wish their daughters be sold into slavery and uh, be... Uh, be used uh, as, as a slave, you know, they wouldn't want that. So they shouldn't let me do that to others, you know. Um, I would also want to wrap up, you know, by letting our women know that this is evil. I use the word evil, right? Uh, female trafficking, uh, any form of um, sex exploitation, any form of um, uh, sex uh, slavery, sex trading, you know, human trafficking should be stopped, should be abolished. And I want Nigerians to know that um, they should find something to do in their country, no matter how difficult. You start small, and by the grace of God, you end up big. There's dignity in labor, and um, it is not so easy outside as a lot of people think. You know, it's not easy to pick up a dollar in uh, an American street or to pick up euro mm -hmm. in... Uh, in uh, a European street, I've, I've, I've been to Italy before and I've been to some European countries and I know it is really tough in those places. Do but we should tell our people, we should make them know that it is hard there, it is tough there, you know, it is not so easy. Yeah, and no it is, lunch, yes, no, yes, no free lunch in free time, that's good. Do you know and it is, sir? yeah. Some of these people, they will tell you that they were women in Babi Salon, yeah, here. I saw it on CNN, so this is not hearsay. Yeah. He sold his barbing salon, right? All his life savings. And that is what he used to travel. This was over a million naira. For crying out loud. If you had one million naira, yeah, you can really you know, invest. why would you not build what you have exactly. here and then go to where you are, you are going there illegally? Apart from all the hassles, when you even get there, you are an illegal person. Yes. You are running from the police. Yes. You are running from, you don't have a place to stay. Yes. What's the probability of getting a job? You are, so it's like the risk outweighs so, yeah. so benefits. much. Yeah. So thank you very much for coming. I want to appreciate Dr. Egagifo and uh, Dr. Oriahi. Uh, viewers, you've heard it all from the experts. Uh, female trafficking is evil and it has deadly consequences, very harmful consequences. We should keep talking, we should keep educating our people, um, our priests, our pastors, our imams, our elders, our traditional leaders, our governmental leaders should keep talking to our young girls, talking to our, our young men, talking to everybody that it is not so easy outside and they should desist from this, um, uh, this, this trip. You know, uh, though they did not agree with me that um, improving the socioeconomic status of, uh, of Nigeria would actually uh, help to reduce that. But I think, I think that if our socioeconomic status improve um, seriously, that at least we'll have some degree of um, reduction in uh, the incidence. But I agree totally with them that we have lost our moral foundations. We have lost our spiritual foundations. 
we've lost it all. And all we're interested in now is the get rich quick syndrome. And um, that continues to widen the rich poor gap. Yeah. Because everybody's interested in money. Everybody's interested in how they will trick their neighbor and get some money out of the person. You know, and that should not be. That should not be. So young girls, young women out there, is a lie. Please desist from it. As we're talking, I know they're trying to convince somebody that you get to Italy, you make money and all the rest. No, <laughs> you are going to, you are, your body is going to be destroyed. Your soul will be destroyed. Your spirit will be destroyed. At the end of the day, you are completely destroyed. And money will pass away. This money will pass away. It's good you have that knowledge. So thank you for coming again. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you very much.